Welcome everybody, Steve here. Today we're building a front receiver hitch for my 71 Chevy. Now I've got a new spot to uh, park my trailer and it would be really nice just to be able to you know steer it in instead of backing in and another reason is I've got a bit of a slope and I really don't like uh, pushing a trailer up you know in reverse it's hard in the transmission a little bit so, but if you can drive it in that's the best so I've got a piece of two inch by quarter that's going to go in between the uh, in between the um, frame but I've got to drop it so we've got to make it so that it goes like this a little bit not a big deal this is a uh, kind of a generic just receiver hitch I picked up from a local supplier here in Red Deer. Uh, it's a lot better than going out and buying a half a length of two and a half by a quarter. And that's just going to get welded on there like that. Uh, we're not trying to save the world here. We're not going to be pulling this down the highway backwards. So we're pushing it down the highway backwards. It doesn't need to be as strong as the one that you built in the back. So we're good that way. I think it's going to work out great. Just got to figure out how we're going to get it in there, how we're going to mount it, but we can do that. Stay tuned. So I've roughly cut a piece of cardboard here. This is just three inches. So about the length that I want. I want it to fit in there. So what we'll do is just take it, cut that corner out of there. That's pretty good. Okay, and on this one, we will I'm just going to shorten that up a little bit. That'll be the shape there. Now I'll probably take about three sixteenths of an inch off of this because we don't want to do a flat flat way weld. We want to weld on edge, edge to edge. You'll see. That's how we make our pattern. It's pretty simple. This one. Now I've got a hole here. And one here. In the fact, I don't want to really drill any more holes in this, and I think that's going to be plenty enough to hold the front uh, uh, receiver hitch in. So we got our patterns. I got some steel here. We got some quarter inch. This is just stuff that I had laying around in my other shop. And what I'm going to do is just. Uh, this is what's going to happen. So on my frame, this is the uh, upper part, and this is the lower part. It goes like that. So I'm going to cut each piece, tack them together, and then I'll set it up there, and then I'll draw. There's two spots where I can put a bolt. I think that's going to be more than enough. So I just have to set these up, draw them out, and all I'm going to do is use a zip cut be really nice if I could get a nice water jet or something like that, but it doesn't exist in my little world anyway. So let's uh, let's 
which way is the best? Best guess it doesn't run there. We'll give the uh, grinder a bit of a break. Now I'm going to drill a hole. Just to receive a... Uh, just to receive a... A, a rivet that is on the, on the frame. So I'm going to take a little bit better measurement and uh, figure out exactly where I have to be with that. I gotta round my corners here, so I'll take a grinder and do that as well. And uh, drill that hole. And then what we can do, take and weld everything up, just tack it up, and then I can put it in place, mark my holes, drill them up. That's our bottom piece right there, and it needs to go just a little bit that way. There's another ribbon on the uh, frame. I got this hole drilled, so I'm just going to check to make sure that everything kind of lines up. I'll make a mark, and then we can uh, tack this together and see if she fits in for good. So of course, I don't have a big enough drill bit to fit the, uh, the head of the uh, rivet. So I had to use the die grinder. No problem. It worked just fine and dandy. Would be nice to have, uh, you know, all your drill bits here, but you do what you can do, that's it. So now I'm just gonna use a piece of square tubing. I'm only gonna leave, oh, maybe a sixteenth of an inch proud right here that way when this goes down on top of it it'll stop in the right spot and then I'm going to weld right along here I just need to make my mark a little bit more clear where I have to stop Back in a bit. Looks good enough to tack. Stack it together and we'll see if it fits. Got her fitting. 
So I ended up having to just die grind this hole a little bit, uh, uh, a little bit more off the top so that it would drop all the way down. But we got her. Everything fits good, and I was able to mark where the holes go. Now I'm not going to make a great big, you know, slotted hole like that. I'm just going to drill. Probably we go one size bigger than half inch. I'll probably go a nine sixteenths hole here. And same with on this side here. And then after that, we're going to cut a little chunk off of here. And that's going to get welded on just like that. So there'll be a little chunk, maybe two inches, two and a half inches. And then hopefully what I'm going to do is it'll end up getting bolted together in the end. That's what I'm planning. So we'll see if that happens. Okay, got one more to build. Still going to cut this other one out. That's not going to be an issue. Just make sure you build it opposite. This is our uh, first one, first mock up. See how she fits in there. I think that's going to be perfect. Now, of course, we just got a hole here and a hole here. And my whole idea is to put the uh, square tubing on here, and that'll kind of brace everything as well. I think it's going to work. Well, let's keep on going. So here's my thinking. So I have my my brackets here. Let's pretend that that's them. They go on the inside of the rails, or the inside of my uh, my frame. But what that means is that you know you just can't build something and just work it in there your frame comes in here like this so you have to design it so that your tube can slide in just a little bit further in so that you can uh, squeeze it together and then slide it apart and then we'll bolt this on here I'm just I'm talking about this part here I'm going to cut off some of this and then that will get welded onto here. And then it, it'll just span in between. Make sense? Just say yes. But what I did do was I just bought a piece 12 inch. And if I cut off a couple, three inches or so, then what ends up happening is this gets a, bit, a little bit too short. So now I'm going to have to go up and exchange this for they have an 18 inch one. So that gives me lots of room to play with. And then I can have a nice four inch stub coming out of here and it works perfect. Okay, I'm just gonna check the camera. Uh, it's been uh, stopping on me. Oh, still going. I gotta get a new chip. That's what happened last time it was doing that. So once we got that in our frame, like I was mentioned before, we got to drop this. So that we got to drop about two inches. So that means that we've got to make a decision about where we want it to go and how we want it to go. That's up next. So I deduced that the best way to do this is just cut them. at 22 and a half degrees. Nope, got that one to do yet. So make that cut at 22 and a half. 
and then all you do is turn this around and then you got a 45 right and then we'll figure out where two inches is and then we'll maybe go maybe a bit more and then we'll just do the same thing we'll uh, cut over here and then when we finally get we know exactly where center is we can just get our exact measurement out here it's pretty hard to guess how much of this is going to take up unless you got some CAD program or something like that now I was thinking about taking a wedge out of here and seeing if you could bend it but this is quarter inch chances of you doing it are really really slim you'd have to have a cutting torch so best way to do that is just cut them weld them up So then we have to measure up, oh well, we can just come from here 4 inches up or here 2 inches and then make a mark and then we can just go that way with it. Okay, let me do some figuring. Alright, you can see what I did here. I just measured up, you got to make sure you don't measure straight up 2 inches this way, it's got to be, you know, straight up this way straight up and down so that line there is going to be I just drew a line from the bottom here added an eighth went 90 degrees to here to two inches and now I'm just going to uh, actually it's two and an eighth when it's all said and done I'm going to make my marks at 22 and a half and I'll cut those That is what I want to achieve. So we got about a two and an eighth inch drop and I think that's going to work out perfect. So I am going to go and exchange that now. And that piece, I'm going to take it out to my other shop, put it on a flat surface and weld it up. It'll just make it a lot easier. So I know I said that I was going to tack this up in my other shop there. But uh, I think I can tack it here. I've got something that's fairly flat. I'll just clamp this. That way I can just keep on working and designing and then I can just do the whole thing all at one shot. Makes a lot more sense. So, I think we can make this work. I'll uh, just start tacking this together and then we can uh, design. Here's uh, I got the little longer uh, receiver hitch last night so we can chop off a little chunk here and then we can decide how it's all going to fit in see if it's going to work okay. let's get out of here. She's looking good. Now, with my calculations, I need to be 25 inches wide here. So in order to do that, you don't, you, you know, it's hard, you know, when you're on center like this, just use your uh, combination square. Go to the right side of the mark and then you just measure over 
12 and a half, make your mark. Just like that. Yep. Works good. Now we can uh, finish designing all the little things that I want to do here. Make sure it's going to work. And then we can, well, we're going to start working on this part of it now, welding these onto our brackets. So I got these four inch pieces all figured out and I'm going to drill the holes first before I cut them. A lot easier working with a bigger piece than it is just a little one. cut. Now we need to weld, well we're going to tack these on to our to our mounting plates here and what is going to determine this one is this one here is the driver's side. I actually got a hook that goes underneath. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to weld the nut in on this side. So from that point on, I'll just give myself a tiny bit of room here. So that measurement right there is what I'm going to use to uh, tack these on with. And then we'll just have to build around that. So basically when you're building something like this, you know, you go in with a plan and it's it changes every minute. You know, I've changed my mind a couple times on this thing already and we're still not done yet but we're getting really close. So let me tack these up and then we can uh, we'll go in and we'll see how it all fits up. Basically got my hole pre-drilled we'll center this and then I can mark where these holes go and then we can uh, um, drill them out as well. All right. She's tight, but it seems to fit. There we go. All right, put a couple bolts in there. Tolerances were a little tight on that one, that's for sure. But that's okay. Taking some measurements here. 16 and a quarter to there. Oh, I gotta get 
get in the line of sight here. Sixteen and a quarter there. So we're as centered as we can get her. Now we can mark our holes. I think if we just do the back one, we should be able to measure it. So we get that in there. All right, that looks good. Looks really, really good. Well, we're in the other shop. Gonna weld well, this all up. <clears throat> now, I said before, you know, when you're building something like this, you're just kind of designing as you go. Now, I got a bit of a rethink. So, this is what I'm rethinking. Now, when I put this in there, you know, it all looks good, everything's fine, but then I've got this receiver hitch kind of sticking out of the front of my truck all the time. I'm thinking, you know, that's not that big of a deal if it's just a, a whatever, but it's a, it's, it's my 71. So, what I'm thinking here is I got these uh, quarter inch by one and a half inch plates. I'm going to weld them on there like that. And then basically I'm just going to bolt this onto this whenever I want it. I'll tack the bolts so that the studs are already there, the bolts are already there, all I do is just slip it up, put some nuts on it, probably two, three minutes just to put the, uh, the receiver on, and then I can take it off when, you know, I'm just driving my truck and I don't want the receiver to be showing. I think that's a good idea. Another thing I'm going to do is, this is the mount here, now, this is two and a half by three sixteenths wall, so there's going to be a little bit of slop in there. Like that. And if this, you know, tightens up a little crooked, that all works, but I didn't, uh, I didn't tighten it up, so I'm not really too sure how it's all going to work out. But what I'm going to do is just weld a nut on here, and then I'm just going to uh, uh, put a bolt and then basically that will tighten up this way. I've already got a bolt going this way, so if I just tighten that up like that, it'll all work out good. So, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this, weld it all up. Hopefully uh, sandblast today and get it ready for paint. All right, we're ready to weld this. We're just going to tack these on. So I've got two pieces here, five and a half inches, and then my other ones are five inches. I've pre-drilled these because I know where the, uh, the hole is going to be. And then when we put the uh, other piece on, basically we'll just mark them and then we can drill those. That should be good to go. Okay, she's all tacked up. Now we can mark where the holes go.
Drill ammo. Now I'm going to be using 7 16 bolts. So I'm just going to drill it one size over, one size over 7 16. A lot happier now. Now I can bolt this thing together. That is, uh, that's an improvement to this design. Okay, now I wouldn't really recommend that for a rear one because I don't know if that's as strong as just welding it onto the to the cross member. But we're only uh, this is only a front mount. Now it's time to weld everything up. Now if I just took and run a bead along here, this whole piece is going to bend over. So we want to just put a little stitch here, a little stitch there, come weld on the other side, try and keep this as flat as we possibly can. And don't weld it all up at the same time, let it cool a little bit. It will definitely help things out. Alright, let's get at her. Well, the big moment. She's all painted. That system I use, I tell you, it looks like it was just powder coated. Okay, that side's in. There we go. Beautiful.
We finally got her done. Front hitch is installed, and I'm really, really happy the way it turned out. Like it is, it's in there and it's tough. Now, when I first got going on this job, I'm thinking, it shouldn't be too bad. It was probably twice the job that I had first estimated. But it was well worth it, you know, we went a little bit farther on the paint than, you know, just using a spray bomb, but that's going to make it last a little bit longer. And just the design of it, you know, it's not like you're working on the bench, you're, sometimes you're on the ground and that's a little bit tough to do. So just prepare yourself if you're going to build one for yourself. More than four hours involved, that's for sure. And as you can see, this is probably the hips that I'll use, it's probably the perfect height. And I think you'll agree, I don't need to be driving around with the hitch showing. It's only a couple bolts, falls right out, it's good to go. Well, I love doing this uh, project for you. It was one that was on my list for a long time, and I got it done. So, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and we're going to catch up to you on the next one, soon.